Something that's really important to understand with personal protection is that it's not equal. It's never been equal, it never will be equal. The advantage is always with the attacker or the criminal. Uh, this needs to be uh, deeply understood. Now, this can come in many different ways. So if we look at the, the person who's um, looking to protect themselves, things are not equal between different people like uh, age, height, weight, fitness levels, uh, mental, emotional strengths, uh, previous experience, uh, studying martial arts as a child, being in the military, working in security, so on and so forth. There's so many uh, differences from one person to another. So with my students, I always tailor uh, the training and uh, the testing phases um, of the programs that we that we give them. Um, I always do a consultation and um, I give advice. Uh, I specialise in personal protection and one of the reasons why we say specialists is because we specialise in tailor making personal protection programmes for different types of people. So other factors are strengths, weaknesses, uh, and of course the threats. So everybody is faced with different threat levels. So once again, it's not equal. It's very difficult to to give out advice, uh, training, and testing um, as like a one size or one style or type fits everybody. Uh, everybody's different. Everybody's unique. Everybody has different capabilities and everybody encounters different types of threat. Uh, this could be based on uh, where you live, uh, the people around you, uh, the country, um, the time, you know, time of day, time of night, uh, location. Are you at home? Are you walking down the street? Are you driving your car? Are you asleep? It goes on and on. So um, it's very important to understand that Personal protection is never equal. One of the major factors is that the advantage is always going to be with the attacker and the criminal. Uh, so, for instance, time. So you don't know the time of the attack. Only the criminal or the attacker knows that. Obviously, they're, and sometimes they don't even know that. It could be an uh, opportunistic type attack. Uh, it could be uh, spur of the moment. Uh, it could also be a very well thought out planned attack so once again it's not equal there's so many different scenarios so many different um, potentials and um, obviously there'll be different outcomes but our main aim is to is to arm the individual with as much uh, information as much uh, technique, tactics, strategy to be able to deal with, with the most likely uh, type of attack. So for instance, if you're living in a country where there's guns, then you'd probably want to focus on uh, scenario situations that involve guns. Uh, here in the UK, uh, guns are not that popular, although the criminals have the guns, once again making it not equal. Um, the likelihood of being confronted with a gun is a lot less than in a country where guns are prevalent. So we want to try and focus on the most likely type of attack. Now, types of attack are not equal. So you can have a very low level type of attack going all the way through to high level attacks, uh, which could involve, um, you know, the potential for kidnap, murder, rape, um, that type of thing. Uh, at the lower end, um, it could be somebody trying to steal your phone, your car, car keys, so on and so forth. Uh, I normally draw the line between the, the person and the object. So if um, somebody's attacking you for an object, that is a lot different to somebody attacking you for you, the person, or the body. So, once again, it's not equal. So, 
you know, it's, it can be quite difficult trying to uh, explain personal protection, like in a nutshell. It's a very complicated thing. But the bottom line is this, is that we all want to be private, protected and peaceful, uh, which means well, the definition of, of personal protection is that you can go home and you sleep and you don't have nightmares. Uh, for me, that is uh, the objective and that is what everybody's entitled to. It's a universal right, human right, that we can live peacefully. Now, when it comes to an attack, uh, some can be, um, some types of attack can be kind of uh, um, the person's fault through neglect or through not paying attention, or maybe they've done something wrong themselves, themselves, and uh, this is some kind of uh, payback. Uh, right through to uh, just a complete random attack. Uh, I get all types of clients come to me. Some um, have never have never encountered violence or an attack um, the whole life, even as a child, as a teenager, uh, through school, college, university, so on and so forth. They've never experienced violence. And then there's other clients that... Um, have relatively experienced violence as a child or at school or, or um, uh, in other fields. Right through to people that kind of live on the edge. They, they kind of like the adrenaline, they're attracted to it. Um, and let's face it, a lot of people don't really want to live a very sedate, boring life. They like a, a bit of excitement, you know, when people go out at the weekend or... They like to live in a edgy part of the city or the town because of the uh, the energy. And um, humans are animals, and uh, we've got built into us the adrenaline system and the uh, the prey, the predator, the the hunting instincts, and um, you know to be exposed to danger is quite a quite a natural and healthy thing. Um, it's not for everybody, but you know, some people they participate in uh, adrenaline sports or adrenaline activities. Uh, like myself, I, I went from one uh, adrenaline hobby to another. Um, some of the things I've done is like f uh, free diving, uh, spear fishing, um, motorcycling, uh, martial arts, military, close protection, you know. These these activities are very uh, very high in adrenaline, and you're definitely on the edge. So for me, my physiology, my mentality, my emotions are able to cope with with these levels of danger. But for other people, you know, the slightest uh, thing that's out of the ordinary will totally spook them or or make them very unsettled. Uh, they possibly suffer from anxiety. Uh, this could come from childhood, this could come from uh, experiences. It can quite often come from the parents or, or the upbringing. So with personal protection, we're trying to look to reduce the levels of anxiety, levels of stress. Um, that's not including positive stress. Like I say, controlled sports that uh, allow you to experience positive stress are quite useful because uh, without, without like a denying force, without pressure without friction uh, we become very soft so it's all about balance and finding the, the balance between uh, obviously our well-being our safety being able to get home sleep at night not have nightmares uh, through to to stimulation and excitement um, you know going to a fairground going to theme parks um, watching uh, a thriller or a psychological um, horror movie or something like that. Um, it's not really my cup of tea, um, but for some people, this is how they uh, get their excitement. So, like I say, personal protection, it's not equal. It never has been, never will be. Uh, that's not the nature of it, which is one of the reasons why it's needed. We need to know how to manage it. We need to know how to understand it. Uh, just just ignoring it is potentially not the best way. Like I say, it depends on the location where you live, your lifestyle. Um, for some people, I don't know, living 
living in the mountains or living in isolation, um, it's going to be different. But even then, you're not free from uh, any form of threat. Uh, personal protection also covers uh, food, uh, housing, uh, finances, uh, health. So the mere fact that you're living, you will encounter some kind of threat to the basic essentials of, of survival or, or existence. Um, in my training programs, uh, we do do uh, a certain amount of uh, prepping. So I always encourage my students to have plenty of water, have uh, candles, uh, keep some spare food, keep some food uh, for your pets. You know, these, these things are not necessarily uh, about confrontation on the streets or in, in the workplace or at home. Uh, these can just be threats from everyday life, uh, from uh, societal changes, from the environment. You know, you get, you get natural disasters, you get power cuts, you get floods. Uh, I live off grid, so um, for me it's peaceful in one way, but in another way it's a challenge. Um, recently we had uh, power cuts, floods, um, water supply problems. Uh, fortunately, you know, we had everything backed up. Uh, it was only for a short period of time, but it, it, it it was a good reminder for me because had it been for an extended period of time, then I would have encountered uh, further problems. But it uh, highlighted the, the need to um, at least consider and think about all types of protection without being paranoid. It's very important. We don't want to be paranoid about this subject. We don't want to suffer from anxiety about personal protection. I make it very, very clear to uh, my students and my clients um, that they don't come to me to become paranoid or, or um, anxious. It's quite the opposite. Uh, most clients, most students will um, report that their anxiety levels, stress levels will um, be lowered after doing even basic training. Um, when we move on to the more advanced stuff, then um, we're able to reduce uh, anxiety, stress, heart rates, so on and so forth. Um, this is a very important part of, um, of the personal protection uh, path. So uh, it's all about being uh, private, uh, protected and peaceful. This is, um, this is the essence of personal protection.